quantum and AI threats in the future of cybersecurity. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Jason Hart, Chief Technology Officer for Enterprise Cybersecurity at Gemalto. Welcome, Jason. Hey, Tanya. Good to see you again. Give us a summary of your professional resume, specifically as it relates to cybersecurity. Yeah, so I've been in information security since almost the age of 18. Uh, I founded one of the world's first ethical hacking companies. Um, so I started off as my career kind of hands-on, um, getting permission from organizations and trying to compromise them. And then from there, I founded um, one of the world's first cloud-based authentication platforms, CryptoCard. Um, so really a bit of an oddball. Um, I'm very technical, very business orientated. Uh, understand pretty much every aspect of, of information security, cybersecurity, uh, from auditing, from compliance, through to writing information security management systems, all the way to creating some of the world's best known technologies. You recently wrote a blog post titled, The Future of Cybersecurity, a 2019 Outlook. In that post, you discuss how our existing encryption technologies are ripe for compromise by quantum computing. Explain the thought behind that. Yeah, so obviously, you know, if you, if you look, you know, we've got a number of kind of technology uh, emerging trends. One of them is quantum compute. Um, now, quantum compute, you know, it has a number of benefits, you know, from the speed of processing um, and, cr you know, crunching algorithms, so greater compute. But at the same time, it has um, some potential large impacts for information security or cybersecurity. And because the ability to, you know, for greater speed and compute power, it has the ability to um, compromise or decrypt um, a number of encryption algorithms or, or public algorithms, um, which obviously has a detrimental effect um, on our current state of security. What is crypto agility and how does an enterprise achieve that state? Yeah, so crypto agility is is the ability to switch different uh, from different encryption algorithms um, at the application layer um, all the way through the, the process. Now, the, the biggest problem, you know, we, we hear lots of people talking about, you know, quantum risk, quantum compute. That is going to be definitely going to be a risk. But there's an awful lot of steps that organizations can start doing to to prepare themselves. Now, if you ha if you are what I call crypto agile you're, you're going a long way to be you know be prepared for, for the, the risks of, of quantum computing now the first thing all organizations should do is you know understand where the critical data is and understand how that critical data is actually be, being protected now if you understand how that data is being protected the the types of algorithms um, uh, th that are being used you can start assessing are those algorithms susceptible to you know crypto um, forms of attack and at the same time you know start looking at the processes to replace those algorithms in order to do that that gives you the ability to be more agile um, and you know crypto agility is a very very positive thing to do in your organization you know we've had various you know um, algorithms which have been susceptible to certain types of attacks over the past you know, number of years, Poodle as an example. So if you have the ability to switch out or you know, replace different algorithms you know, from the application all the way through the process, you ultimately are, are more agile. And that, that's where the term crypto agility comes from. At what point in time do you see the quantum threat actually emerging? Yeah, there's, you know, there's different, there's different time scales on, you know, when crypto is actually going to be a problem. Um, you know, 20, you know, 10 years ago, it was going to be 30 years away. Now, you know, they're predicting, you know, it could be as, as soon as, you know, the window could be from 20, uh, 2022, all the way through to 2030. But if you look at the acceleration and the speed in which technology is, is being created, disruption, etc., I think, for any organization now, you know, it should be on their risk register, you know, and for example, where encryption is, is being used in financial systems, you know, once these systems are put in place in the architecture, they could be there for five, six, seven years. If you look at IOT or technology where it's embedded and it's going to be hard to replace that could technology could be there in, you know, for example, in a car for, for 20 years. So depending on the use case and, and the business where 
the encryption or the algorithm is being used, consideration should be uh, taken to the you know John Levity of of of, of the protection of that data. Okay, so let's talk about more immediately. I mean, in the near term, you mentioned that 2019 will be the year of the most sophisticated cyber attack ever, and it will involve malware powered by AI. What do you see there? Yeah, I think, again, if you, if you look at just how organizations and as individuals were consuming, you know, more and more data, using more and more data, um, the, the attack vector for a bad guy has become bigger. Now you've got the onslaught of you know machine learning and artificial intelligence, which again is you know a very positive thing in businesses. So it's only going to be a matter of time where this technology is actually used against an organisation to con conduct more exotic forms of attack. Um, you know, again through you know through malware, through other forms of you know social engineering or electronic social engineering. Um, so for me, I, I believe this year, one of my crazy predictions is that we will see one of the largest attacks we've ever seen to date. Okay, Jason, this is the stuff of science fiction. I mean, how are we actually teaching machines to recognize AI powered malware? So again, you know, if, if I was to go out, you know, we can look at sort of attack patterns, you know, if I was to type your credentials into the internet, into the dark web, you know, there's going to be a footprint on you or any individual or any organization. If you can use machine learning and artificial intelligence to do that automatically for you and kind of do the, the groundwork or the grunt work really, really quickly and get a really defined pack of data on an individual and organization and then use that to conduct very coordinated attacks, for example, phishing attacks, you know, we could well see you know, AI forms of phishing, you know, where the bots are just generating all this information on the individual to looking at their email addresses, looking at social media accounts, looking at their interests and hobbies, packaging this all together, and then using it in an automate, automated way to do a coordinated attack against you through many different channels. But in the way that you believe it's a trusted individual because you know we know your hobbies, we know your interests. So if we can collate all this information together really, really quickly, do a coordinated attack in a you know in an automated way, it becomes very, very powerful. So you know you, you talk about phishing attacks, and and I think we're we're all vulnerable at some level. So maybe then at the individual level, are are the traditional tactics like strong passwords or two-factor authentication, and and to your point, not clicking on suspected links even still valid preventative measures or will we need new individual measure measures as we live on the edge yeah i think it's a great question i think as you know you know the world plc i still not you know the problem for me is we're still not doing the basics properly and um you know again you know back in the day when i founded crypto card you know and created the world's first cloud-based authentication i went to government and i said it should be mandatory to to replace a static password you know, still 90% of the world do not use a one-time password. So there's some fundamental basics that we can all be taking in our personal life and in our business life to reduce that risk. Today, it's still very, very easy pickings for a, an attacker to target any individual where, you know, they're using a static password and not a one-time password. Yes, over time, you know, there will be alternative attack vectors to circum, you know, kind of bypass other forms of security controls. But ultimately, to date, we're still not doing the basics when it comes to information security. Jason Hart, Chief Technology Officer, Enterprise Cybersecurity at Gemalto. If somebody wants to connect with you and find out more about your work, how can they do that? Yeah, the best way is uh, reach me on Twitter. So uh, Hart, H-A-R-T underscore Jason. And uh, yeah, reach out to me and be very happy to answer any questions or help anyone where required. Thanks again for some more of your time, Jason. And if you guys want to find me and more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.